let's start out with the smart alerts. So again, the smart alerts right now is focused on only on websites. It's, we're going to be adding it in. So remember this quick review. Um, we've had the ability to create alerts forever, for as long as I can remember, for um, uh, infrastructure and application data. So for infrastructure data, you can create alerts. For application data, you can create alerts. But you could not until you know 171, you could not create alerts for website data. So now you can, and the way it works is different. In, in the old days, you would have come here, you would have clicked new alert, you would have you know, basically gone through the, the uh, dialogue here to, <clears throat> to create your alert. Uh, now with this new smart alerts, which again is, is now available for websites, will soon be available for applications and eventually for infrastructure. But now, you know, currently for websites, you'll go actually to the website's data, you'll go to your website, and then whatever screen you're on, in this case, I'm at the summary dashboard for the entire um, website, Robot Shop, you'll see down at the bottom an add alert button. So that's new. <clears throat> and that's obviously where you will go to add your alert. Um, I'm just going to click it here. There's some other things to note about clicking this in context, but I'll get to that in a moment. But right now, I'm just, again, focused on the entire Robot Shop website. I click on Add Alert. So you'll see that you get this wizard, and it has two modes to it, basically. It has a simple mode, and you can see there's an advanced mode up here. <clears throat> the simple mode, obviously, is the simple way to do it, and will get you through most use cases. Um, and then the advanced mode, like anything else, will allow you to tweak it even further. You have three blueprints, as described earlier, that you can choose between JavaScript errors, slowness, and, and uh, HTTP status code. So if we stick with JavaScript errors just uh, for now, you can see over here, it says, all right, you'll be alerted every time your matching JavaScript error message occurs more often than normal. <clears throat> you have a drop down here. I can actually choose a specific JavaScript error. I can use you know, some simple you know, regular expression like verbiage, like contains and starts with. I could actually say any. So if I say any here, you'll see that it gives me a view of all the, the you know, these blue lines, vertical lines are, are all the JavaScript errors that have occurred. <clears throat> so what we do is we look back at the last 24 hours, we see how many JavaScript errors have occurred and we set what we think is a good threshold. And you can see that with that threshold, over the last three hour, uh, tw sorry, 24 hours, you would have gotten three violations here. You could do the same thing with a specific JavaScript error. Uh, the nice thing is you don't have to copy paste. You can simply click select JavaScript error. Looks like I only have really two here, but I could pick one. You can see it's actually pretty similar. This guy looks like he's actually thrown a lot. Let's take a look at the other one. Uh, thrown less, um, but you can still see we get about three violations for that guy. Uh, and then, of course, you could do, like I said, you could do contains and things like that. So that's the general idea with um, <clears throat> with JavaScript errors. I'll move through the widget here. We can look at the other blueprints in a moment. Um, so let's say you were happy with this one. You only wanted to alert on the specific error. You were good with this threshold. You could just simply click the Next button. Um, now it asks you if you want to modify the scope at all. Um, so right now we're... You know, we're really scoped, again, like I said before, to the entire website, but maybe, oh, yeah, you know what, I really only want to do this for a particular page. Or maybe I only want to do it for a particular country or whatever it might be. You can change your filter here or, uh, you know, modify your filter. <clears throat> uh, in, my, in this case, I'm going to, you know, just leave it as is. I'll click Next. It says, all right, what do you now want to do with this alert, right? Where do you want to send it? So you'll need to... Uh, pick an alert channel. This is, you know, pretty much the same as what it, how it used to work. In terms of all alerts, obviously need to go to an alert channel. So you'll add one or more alert channels, and then you'll go ahead and create it. Now, another thing that's different about this is before, you know, as I showed you earlier, you would go to the settings alert screen to see all your alerts. Now you'll notice here that the smart alerts appear in context to the uh, type of data the alert is configured for, which again today is only website data, but in the future will include application infrastructure data. So if I want to see my existing alerts, you can see here's the one I just created. It looks like there was some created earlier, <clears throat> but this is the one I just created. 
my uh, uncut script script error alert I can pause it here I can delete it here I can also edit it here uh, where you can see I can you know um, tweak the settings I'm gonna actually delete it just for the sake of demonstration and we're gonna walk through another example um, with it with the advanced mode <clears throat> so I'm just gonna pop back in here but I'm gonna just go straight to advanced mode uh, you'll see here that uh, like we had with the filter I can set this again and in fact what I'm gonna do now is pop out of here temporarily I'm going to change the filter here I'm gonna say you know this is an existing capability that's been here you know for a long time in website data I could say you know what I want to render this dashboard only for Chrome and so you'll see it changes my dashboard to only show me website data now for people using the Chrome browser. Now, if I click the Add Alert button and I go to Advanced Mode, you'll notice it already has that selected. And this would have been the case as well if I went through the Simple Mode. Let's just quickly do that, just get to the filters, and you'll see there you go, it already picked that up. So the idea is <clears throat> from a you know sort of logistics or, I don't know, ergonomics perspective, as you walk through the building of this, these alerts, you might be reacting to something you see on the screen. So you could set, you know, whatever, you might be looking at Chrome from the United Kingdom and decide, oh yeah, you know what, I want to alert on this. So then when you click the add alert button, it's already got um, that, um, that filter set for you. So you don't have to set it again, which is pretty nice. I'm gonna just get rid of those filters though, cause this is demo data and I'm not sure what kind of data we have for Chrome in the United Kingdom. And we'll go back in here and go back to advanced mode. <clears throat> so now um, you can see the steps over here. You can see that um, it's got my filter set. It's got actually it's set to JavaScript error right now as it did with the um, simple mode. Again, I can, you know, I can muck around with this thing as we saw before. But now you'll see that I've got the ability to change the threshold, right? So before when I went through simple mode, I could basically just accept it. Now I could tweak it. I could say, yeah, I'm gonna raise this to 150 or whatever. You can see now I'm not gonna get any violations. I could drop it down to 100. Uh, I get more violations, you get the idea. I can also use error rate instead of error count if I prefer. Um, so it gives me more flexibility in terms of tweaking or tuning the, you know, the, the thresholds and how I'll get alerted on them. Then I can I have <clears throat> I have more flexibility in terms of the time period over which we're measuring this data or you know or monitoring it for alerting. So the default, as with our existing alerts, is just to look to see if the condition persists over a specified amount of time. This would be the time window in our existing alerting paradigm. And as with our time window, we have the options of increasing it um, to higher values. But now we have some other options. We have every time the condition triggers a specified amount of times in a defined uh, time window. So we could say something like 30 minutes, but we have to see at least three violations. And you'll see my violations went away there because we don't, we never had in the last um, 24 hours, three violations in a 30 minute time window. Uh, so a little bit more flexibility there. It looks like we had two, if we don't do two violations in a 30 minute time window and four, if we had one violation in a 30 minute time window. And then we have a new very cool thing that we can do with the, you know, because website data is tracked back to the users, we actually can say, you know, I only want to know about this problem if it affects some number of users or some percentage of users. And then from that point on, it's the same thing with the alert channel. But then another thing you get with the advanced mode that you don't get with simple mode is you can um, uh, further tune the pop-up that you get in the Instana UI and the data and the description and title that you get in the alert. So whatever I could do whatever I want there, you know, more than 20% of users have impacted, whatever. Um, and that will obviously be in the pop-up, it will be in the alert. I can also change the <clears throat> um, alerting level, uh, defaults to warning, I can change it to critical and I can configure it to trigger an incident. So these are all things you can currently do with our existing alerts, and obviously you can still do them with the new smart alerts. It's just part of the advanced uh, properties. Let's actually go back and create another new one, and let's look at the other um, uh, blueprints. In fact, let's do that in advanced mode. So I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna 
select slowness. Uh, you can see it's based off of on load time. It gives us, you know, a definition of what on load time is going to help us with. I'll say, yeah, that's what I want to base it on. <clears throat> and we get the same idea where you get, um, actually, let's quickly do this in, in a simple mode first. Sorry about that, slowness. Um, you'll see that, you know, right now, based off of the, uh, the data I've got here and the defaults, I'm going to get a lot of violations. That's actually because this is demo data and we intentionally um, have the value shoot up for demoing purposes. So you probably wouldn't see this in a real non-demo environment, um, but that's the case here. You can see I'd get a lot of violations here. So this would be a case where I'd probably want to go into advanced mode. And maybe you'll see something similar, similar to that when you're configuring this in your environment. Uh, you can see for slowness, we've got a lot of um, ability to tweak this guy. For example, <clears throat> I can change the uh, the metric that we're using. So we're using the 90th percentile, which is recommended. I could change that. Um, I can also change the seasonality. For example, we're using a, a daily seasonality. I could change it to a weekly seasonality. Um, I can also change it to a actual static threshold. Um, Right now, it's basically looking at the data. You know, when, when using a static threshold, it's set it to 5219, which gives me these five violations. Obviously, like we saw before, uh, with the um, JavaScript errors, I could tune that. I could make it higher to get fewer. I could make it lower to get more. Um, and then, again, I can stick with the seasonality approach, but I can change the sensitivity. So if you look at the dotted red line here, that's the basically the, the threshold that we're using based off of the analysis set to a sensitivity of four. If I increase that to 20, you'll see it jumps way up, right? So I got fewer um, uh, violations there. So these are just different ways you can, based off of your data, you can tweak it uh, to get the right, uh, the right you know, value out of the uh, alerts that you get. <clears throat> and then down here, all this is going to be the same regardless of the blueprint that you use. The only thing that's different from blueprint to blueprint is how you tune the actual violations. The scoping to the, you know, the filter is the same across the different blueprints. The different options you have for the threshold, timing threshold are the same, and the alert channels are the same. The properties are the same for all three blueprints. It's just that the ability to tweak the um, thresholds and the how often you get or how many uh, violations and alerts you get is different based off of the different metric. <clears throat> so that's a quick demo of smart alerts. Hopefully you'll find that to be a lot easier to use and more powerful than our existing alerting system. As I mentioned, you will see that rolling out into our application data first. I don't have a time frame for you. I don't work in product management, but that is what we're working on right now. So that would be next and then after that, eventually, it will roll over into infrastructure as well. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, and our entire um, alerting paradigm will be based off of smart alerts.